hand raised. And, but also if you're on the phone, please just go ahead and pipe up. Um, if you raise your hand, I'll try to make sure that you get called in, but also feel free again to just go ahead and dive into questions, comments, and any thoughts that you might have. Uh, but uh, to start us off, I'll, I'll go to Bob and, and ask if you had any, or ask for, for your question. Thank, thanks so much, uh, Carolina, and th thank you both very much for some really fascinating presentations. Uh, my question was, uh, with regard to co-management, uh, uh, it looked like uh, you, you were talking about uh, doing co-management and management at the same time, and I'm wondering if you're drawing a distinction between uh, co-management and management when they're happening uh, at the same time. Um, Bob, was your question specific to Rafaela or Vera or to both of them? Uh, sorry, sorry, to Rafaela, she had mentioned that, uh, that the uh, borough okay. was doing both co-management and management. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Bob, uh, for pointing that out. No, but uh, there is actually for me, it was a distinction. So if we look at the, from, from the partnership of managing species, I, this is about co-management. The management actually was referring to, uh, literally to wildlife management, to the actual management of a species with respect to harvest. But overarching for that is, of course, is the co-management aspect to it. But that was literally just, you know, kind of the biological management. So, but thanks for pointing that out. I'll make that better in the, in the slide next time. Oh, thanks for clarifying. Thank you, Rafaela. Did anybody else have um, some immediate questions or, or thoughts they would like to share? But I'll, I'll just say I'll also right away that both of these presentations speak very loudly about coastal resilience through supporting community needs and addressing community concerns. Um, so I, I think it's good for us to think about that, whether um, Rafaela brought up multiple points and so did Vera that had to do with food security, food safety, but also the cultural elements that um, the, the social health of actually being engaged in gathering your food and the tools needed to do that. And also some key topics brought up were that um, indigenous peoples or Inuit already have monitoring methodologies that, they're, that they've been using for thousands of years. Um, and that the importance of science and, and uh, the IK working together to to advance our understanding of those things. Those were some of the key things that I really heard um, that resort, resort or lead us back again to um, empowerment of the community, which, which brings us to coastal resilience. Uh, and before we then, because I brought that up, before we go into that discussion more, um, maybe I'll just ask Zara and Rafaela if, if there were some other key points such as that, that that you would like us to focus a discussion on? Well, <clears throat> I just I, I forgot to thank you know various other people that have been in this um, project, and particularly Helen Wiggins and Lisa Guy and and Olivia and many others. But um, I I believe in local knowledge or indigenous knowledge or traditional ecological knowledge. Um, it, it, we've been doing this for many, many years. We have very good people that are experts in their own way in so many different things. I mean, um, I'm sure people have heard that uh, on St. Lawrence Island, we have over 100 terms for ice, uh, just in ice, but that's um, primarily for uh, safety. We, ha we have to know different types of sea ice for uh, risking your life to go out for 30, 40, 50 miles. So I, I heard from one of our hunters that they had to go over 120 miles to find ice, good ice conditions to harvest marine mammals. So they're risking their lives. They're traving great distances, and it may, it's a full-time, hardworking job. And they get something on my plate uh, as a, a gift, and we value it. It nourishes us. It's, hunting is very much a, a part of our identity. Um, Owls and whale provides nutritional 
cultural, uh, spiritual resources for our communities. And that's what we want to ensure and ensure that our young people understand the value of what it means to harvest and, and share these resources. Thank you. Um, Rafaela, you, you had a comment also? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, as, as Vera pointed out, and I think, it, you know, resilience is really inherent in being, you know, but I think it's, it's inherent of, you know, most living species, but I think that specifically if you live in the Arctic or in other challenging environments, um, only if you are resilient, you have yeah. remained. And I think uh, that uh, remaining, you know, is testament to your, Unique uh, knowledge and your 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 skill set that you have. But I, I guess one thing I wanted to point out, you know, we always say, oh, uh, you know, uh, TK has to be, you know, a partner is 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 valuable knowledge. I I just for myself would like to say that, um, over the years, you know, with the knowledge that has been shared with me, I have become a better biologist. I have become a better veterinarian. So it, it is a two-way street of sharing, and I think that's really important. It's not just about collaborating. It's about fertilizing each other's knowledge systems and, um, you know, and having and sharing goals and sharing the goal to, you know, whether we call it manage these uh, uh, species or uh, ma manage an ecosystem, or if we say protect or steward or safeguard. But if we, I think the other element that I think is important is the goal. If if the goals do not unite, um, it, it will not work, right? Uh, there can be enough efforts to or thought of of trying to bring those things together, but we have to share the goals. We have to share uh, common ground on these things, and I think that's that's for me a really important, um, you know, other issue to it, and. Um, you know, and possibly it may sound uh, unusual to bring that up in a, uh, presentations like this. I think humbleness, humbleness from a Western science perspective, I think is a very important thing to actually bring to the table. And Native people are humble in what they, when they meet other people, when they exchange knowledge, no one ever thinks that they know best. It is about sharing things. And I think that's important. It's, vital and integral to the, to these cultures and if we participate and also accept sharing of responsibilities sharing of knowledge sharing of resources i think we actually could get to a common ground of uh uh working better together to um you know to uh protect uh shape be be conscious steward uh steward and stakeholders, and it will make us be mindful, mindful of our footprint, mindful of our actions, mindful of our, you know, needs and desires and goals. Thank, Th thank you so much. That's very relevant to bring into this conversation. Really good points. Thank you. Um, did, did anybody have any questions or comments yes, that they would like to add? Uh, Rafaela, I am wondering about in this monitoring. Um, group you have um, what's the role of young people because i think it's uh, as you mentioned part of my understanding of this traditional knowledge all the elders go they go hunting or they go camping whatever they do and as you said they are always observing while they are doing um, fishing they are also observing like either bird picking or the geese hunting or something so there is this constant observing and evaluating and checking out for everything. Um, also, I'm wondering about the role of the younger people. What we have in Canada mm. um, is that often as the younger people are participating less in these traditional activities, and there is some sense that um, some of that um, knowledge is not there as much because they are not so interested in joining the um, elders or other people going hunting because it's more comfortable to stay home. So even though, yeah, there is a store food that is not so good, 
there is a motivational aspect that they feel there is no the discipline and the focus they need to really continue in doing the activities that the elders used to practice. That's um, a problem. And uh, like I was talking to people in um, Gamble this morning, and I was they were mentioning how um, Daniel Apasingo is the one who was 15 years old, and he is the one who got a, a whale in the summer. And I. I just really, I find it striking the, how important it is really that young people are still practicing their, their activities because that, if you're out there, you have to be observing, as you said, in, in Gamble, they have this, the safety of the ice is paramount. So they have to be checking the weather, the ice, the currents, everything, and practicing their knowledge. So, but we need to keep the young people engaged. So how is it in the other parts of, of Alaska? How are they being engaged? And do you notice a change or are they, uh, like I know in Shaktulik, they are not as engaged as in, um, Gamble is, is a bit different than others. So they are more there than in other communities mm. because they need to be. And um, so that makes them more resilient for sure. And that's why yeah. they are such good observers and so there. <laughs> But how is the how are the groups in our communities in in this um, monitoring Arctic observing network you have? Derek, can I answer it from just from uh, actually uh, from a little bit of a different aspect because only Vera can really you know uh, speak. I think uh, okay. for me to speak about the community, I can you know I, I live here and and I work and I collaborate and we share, but, uh, you know, I'm not sitting at everybody's household and observing, you know, everything. So I would really think that uh, Vera is the best person to answer that. But I want to come back to uh, about this idea of, uh, you know, the young people. So what one of the things that the wildlife um, uh, program up here does, we actually have a wildlife intern program. And this wildlife intern program uh, supports, uh, you know, Inupiaq students, but also, uh, you know, other native students to come and work in our department to do uh, summer internships, seasonal work. And they get involved in all of the aspects that we do up here. And part of it is really, you know, A, to, uh, you know, groom a new generation of scientists, right, that are bilingual, literally bilingual. They are getting their biology degrees and they're at the same time, you know, are rooted in their, uh, you know, in their tradition, in their hunting community. And so hopefully we get, um, you know, these new, these bilingual scientists that at one point, you know, will take over, um, you know, leading uh, these, uh, you know, these departments. And to make a point about this department, you know, we have a huge subsistence science division. So we are actually uh, a very, uh, we're evenly divided between Western scientists with PhD of different, uh, you know, or DVMs of different um, trainings, which is, uh, you know, matched by our subsistence researchers, which are, you know, active hunters or whaling captains um, uh, that we work with. So we have that right there, but we're also trying to actually engage, you know, the young generation that's thinking about, you know, becoming wildlife biologists. And by bringing them in and training them and, you know, repeatedly have them come back. And we had several, you know, really successful, um, you know, uh, successful stories or success stories of people uh, of young generations really moving on and, and taking both of those knowledge systems, embracing them and, um, you know, making them uh, their, uh, uh, their future goal to work in, but also to look out, um, you know, for the community. And to add to that, we also provide, you know, internship opportunities for veterinary students and marine mammal biologist students with the, uh, with the perspective of not just giving them an exciting working place, but showcasing and making them participate in what it means to do, to work with subsistence hunters and to do wildlife biology or wildlife health up in the Arctic to just hammer in this point. You are interested in polar bears, you are interested in walrus. You cannot look at it only as a species. There are people attached to this. And if you're unwilling to work with the people, then that's not the right job for you. Or probably you will not get, uh, will be working up here on the North Slope. Mm -hmm. so, so we are trying from our element to do education, right? right. And 
tight and pulling pulling the young generation in just as I think you know the communities are trying to to do with their youngsters in their communities. Sorry for taking up that much time. Thanks. Rafaela, would it be fair for me to say when when I think about um, your department and in indigenous knowledge and another way it seems to me another way that you support youth and um, and their respect of their indigenous knowledge is through your respect of their indigenous knowledge of you putting a priority and importance on their indigenous knowledge meaning that just as much importance is put to the youth that that stays in their village to continue to learn their indigenous knowledge as those that go to get a westernized education would, would that be fair to say um that's that's very fair to say and um uh and I guess I would like to point something out because I know that, you know, using TK or using the word TK or indigenous knowledge is also very, you know, politically correct and also very, you know, fashionable. And I just want to make a point for myself, you know, working with traditional knowledge holders has never, it's not a new thing for me. I mean, prior to the Arctic, I actually did work in East Africa on camels. And we actually wrote a book on uh, camel health, and it has a huge component of ethno-veterinary aspects in it, which was, uh, you know, something that we felt very strongly about. And um, I did work in the Caribbean as well, and there I worked with local fishermen. So yes, respect for TK is not new to me, and I think it's really important um, to signal that. And to signal it that, as I, that's why I said earlier, it has made me, and it's continuing to make me a better biologist. It's continuing to make me a better veterinarian that can, you know, serve uh, the things that I care about. So my goals or my uh, value system, which is, you know, to uh, to serve animals and to serve the people that use them and the environment. So um, without it. I, I would not be where I am today in my life, knowledge-wise. So yes, it, it's really important to um, to showcase how much you are learning yourself, and not just saying yes, we used it, but rather um, it, it's rounding every, rounding out everything I know about animals, and uh, and I truly appreciate it. It makes my life richer. Thanks. Thank you very much. Zira, did you have any thoughts on, on Laura's comments and question? Um, well, just to say that, you know, our coastal communities, we rely on various marine mammals and as well as land, uh, terrestrial animals for like Pacific walrus and marine gear. Uh, it's a fundamental aspect of living life in rural Alaska. Um, it's part of our life ways. It's, um, for those young hunters out in the communities, I'm sure you know, they go to school and they're learning and observing and um, have to have patience, of course, to be a successful hunter. And I'm glad um, the young man from, uh, the young hunter from Gamble was mentioned. Um, he, he had a lot of uh, challenges for his harvesting of a bowhead whale, but it's just, um, we don't have wildlife internship program here in our region, so that's very good to hear what Raphael said, but we, we have, we've been trying to work with two, uh, some students from ANSEP. Um, we have two students this, this summer working with us. Um, they're into resource and conservation uh, um, interests. So that's a start for us, but it would be great to have uh, a similar program like that most of the world has. So it's, it's yeah, that's part of our ways of uh, harvesting and going for these um, animals to, that sustain us. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you so thank much. You, you guys thank are you. just running out of time now. Um, if you have additional questions, please feel free happy to write them to me or to any of the other members of the co-leads. Um, also on the IARPIC page is the, is the actual page for the Coastal Resilience Collaboration Team and discussion points can be added there and, and it's a really good platform for continuing these discussions.